Namaste, friends and family, Venus lovers, soul tribe. Welcome to my channel. This is Dr. Danny, physician astrologer. Today, we're going to talk about Venus and her transit through cancer. This starts on July 7th and goes through July 23rd. This is very interesting energy. Uh, there's some serious energy going on, a new moon conjunct serious. We also have a grand trine between Saturn, Venus, and Lilith, and we're going to get into all of that. So sorry, this is not a live presentation. I really have been enjoying interacting with you all and having you comment and keeping me straight if I mess something up or, you know, if, if something is not clear, you know, it helps me give you the information that you need. So I love that. But right now I am uh, working intensely. So I just got off of a 24 hour shift. It was great. I, I got to deliver three star seeds, uh, but I didn't sleep very much. So I am a little tired, but the time that I'm recording this is when my mind is the most sharp after I'm on call. If I wait till prime time at the end of the day, I'll be dog meat and I won't be able to keep it straight as it is. This is my third try trying to reboot this. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully I can deliver you a nice presentation. Um, so let's see. I want to do a few announcements with you before we get into the content, just so we can get all of that out of the way. I want to talk to you about summer school, summer school session one, business and financial astrology. This is my greatest work of art so far. I love creating these courses. I love doing them live with you. But this course was so big. There was so much content. It took me months to research it, to bring it all into one coherent uh, energy that another person could spend weeks absorbing rather than the months that I had to spend. So the course is going to consist of several modules, probably about four hours of content. And what we are going to do from July 7th to, to August 8th is I will drip the content to you and you will study between the drips. And then on the 20th of July, on a Saturday morning, we're going to meet and we're going to, I'm going to be available to you to answer any questions that you have about the modules that you have had so far. And the first half will likely be business only. The second half, after we do the business, and I make sure that you guys really understand those concepts, then you will get the evaluating the individual for prosperity and purpose. So I'm going to teach you how to do a prosperity and purpose reading. It's going to be really, really nice. And then at the end on August 8th, I believe it's a Thursday night. We'll go all night if you want to. Uh, Q&A session, anything that you want to ask me about the course, if you want to ask me about your personal chart, anything like that. Now, enrollment is open for this course. So the, the modules have not dropped yet, but the resource documents are there. So if you want to get started looking at those, maybe looking at some charts, getting your software set up so that you can participate in the content that's coming to you. So that's available there. The link is below. Summer session two will be a course taught by our dear Don Bird, who does the dailies on the Fellowship of 13 Signs, which you should join on Facebook if you're over there. I post there almost every day. Don posts there every day doing the dailies. And his niche is the lunar nodes and evolutionary astrology. And so he's going to give you the business on this. It's going to be a long course. He's envisioning three sessions. Uh, he hasn't got it all hammered out yet, but links will be coming here probably in about three or four weeks. Okay. So I want you guys to, to be on board with this. This is going to be interactive and very helpful, very useful information for those of you that want to take your astrology game to the next level. Okay. Um, all right. So that was that announcement. <clears throat> uh, like the video. If you love this content at the end, you don't have to do it now. If you haven't decided yet, please subscribe if you're lurking. And then if you want to know when I go live, if you want to know when a video drops, please hit the notify bell. That's what they tell me to tell you so that uh, we can get you guys in the loop. And thanks so much for participating with the lives. Those are a lot of fun. And thank you for your comments in the community. Uh, I really enjoy uh, reading the, the last post we did with the superpower superhero and where you're from. So you could be a, a flying witch from Hogwarts, perhaps, uh, you know, depending on your sun, moon and rising. So check out the community, uh, leave, leave what uh, you think you are based on your sun, moon, rising, and just, uh, you know, en enjoy practicing astrology with us. It's a lot of fun. So, all right, let's share the screen and talk about cancer. Yeah, on my first take, I didn't bring this graphic up and I just started talking about cancer because <clears throat> I saw this 
Uh, when I did, I don't even remember what I searched. I just found it and I said, that's Venus in Cancer. And it might've been months ago and I just dropped it in the folder. And then when I was thinking of what the thumbnail would look like for this video, I forgot that I had this picture. So this to me is just like Venus in Cancer, right? Cancer is the, the moon energy. It's water. It's the deep dark inside of us. And Venus is this amazing, beautiful light of divinity, light of creation inside of us that, that experiences and attains enlightenment through the senses and not just the five physical senses, but also the spiritual, emotional, uh, and etheric bodies. She's her, her feeling is all around you. That's how, when you feel spirit tingles or glimmers, that's Venus energy. She's speaking to you. She's saying, feel this, feel this. This is in your body. This is good energy. Go with it. So I just, you know, I saw the picture and it gave me the spirit tingles. So this, this is like Venus in Cancer. Now, Venus has been in Gemini. So Gemini is a very airy space, very mental space, very transactional space. It's not emotional. It's about the truth. It's, you know, getting to the bottom of things and really understanding them. Mercury just zipped through there, uh, is now opposing Pluto, leaving that uh, that uh, aspect, which is a purging um, and uncovering of knowledge. So we're here, we're doing astrology, we're trying to figure out what's actually going on in the sky. And you guys don't even want to look at the calendar I'm going to show you. It is so busy this first weekend, uh, right before Venus goes into Cancer. So imagine going from this air sign of Gemini into this energy, this watery sort of from air to water. It's like taking a plunge. It's like, and then splashing into the water. And then you, then you go deep and everything changes. Like the air around you changes. Your ability to hear and smell and see and taste and touch changes. Uh, you feel that the pressure changes. Uh, gases change. They get compressed. And so you can't breathe in as much air unless it's compressed when you're breathing it in, which is why, you know, why they have scuba. So anyway, it's like, it's like a decreased ability to move, right? It's almost like you're, you, you want to move, but you can't, or perhaps you just sit and you don't have to move. Um, but it's an increased ability to perceive, right? So it's a great time to feel into what you're creating and send and sense and feel everything that's going on around you. Who are you affecting? How do you affect them? Interactions with others will be more meaningful and more deep with Venus in Cancer. Also, when you find something beautiful, when you sense something beautiful, it might move you emotionally, whereas Gemini is not emotional. Cancer very much is. So you might see that pain and get the glimmers and you just get tears in your eyes because it's so wonderful right? Making love might make you cry, you know, when it doesn't usually, uh, staring at a beautiful painting might make you cry. Tasting something delicious might make you cry. Okay. So it might, you might just be a very feeling time for us. So this is really fantastic. And, uh, what I want to do next <laughs> is maybe show you this calendar. You know what? Let's do this. Let's go into the sky because we always want to start there. We'll, we'll start from the cosmic viewpoint of the solar system and i'll take you through this short transit of venus and cancer so when we look at the sky when we look at a chart we're not looking at it from this perspective but this is indeed how the solar system is shaped it's how it moves uh, we are standing here on this little blue dot right here so when we when we stand here and we stare at the sun we see that baby evening morning, evening Venus, the baby Venus evening star. Oh my gosh, y'all, I'm a mess already. Uh, and then Mercury moving very quickly, uh, almost to the point where we will, this, this will happen in about a month. We'll station uh, retrograde with Mercury. Uh, then we have Jupiter over here in Taurus. You can see the Pleiades right there, but the sun is conjunct star Sirius. Or will be very shortly. So you see that? That's star Sirius right there. So not on the ecliptic per se, but close to. And we can see what that looks like on Stellarium. We also have uh, Neptune and, and uh, Saturn both retrograde now. Right there. So this is our 
solar system. Let's move the dates forward through this transit. It's not long, so we don't have too much to look at, but there's some crazy transits right before she enters into Cancer. All right, so that's it. That's that quick little movement right there. And, uh, but these energies are big and they're, you know, look how small Earth is. You know, and imagine all of these are sort of toroidal fields emanating their energy outward. And from our perspective, we see the archetype of the hero's journey colored by the energy of Venus and it, it comes to us. So the constellations, my point about looking at this is that the constellations are always available to us. They're everywhere. They're always there. But how they're flavored is when we see a planet moving through them. So then it, then it triggers something. It sings a song in us. Okay. So that's why we make a big deal about this in astrology. Let's look at the dates from the sky. Now we're on earth. Okay. So this is the 7th of July. And you can see sun smack dab in the middle of Gemini. There is Venus about to enter into Cancer. There's Jupiter in Taurus. Mars has will also be entering Taurus in a few days out of Aries. So, yeah. So this is basically, oh, gosh, sometimes this thing is hard to drive. Okay. Let me zoom out. That helps. All right. Let's advance the days and watch what the planets are doing just for a few days. So there you can see Venus moves into Cancer. There's the dog star. See here's Sirius right here. So you can see they're conjunct. You know what? While we're on uh, Stellarium, I'm going to show you a, another cool thing before we get into the astrology. <clears throat> that I think I didn't really make all that clear on my la last live. Uh, so this will be on the 16th, the sun moves into Cancer. Do you see that? And then on the 23rd, we are Venus in Leo. Okay. There's my birthday. Nope, not a Leo. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Okay, let me let me show you this really, really cool opposition, so to speak. I don't, I don't I can't think of a better word for it. But when the sun dips down below the horizon, you have two very wonderful opportunities approaching. So we'll start with the morning. And what we're going to do is, oh, here it is. You see that? Oh, wow, this is cool. So right around my birthday, look at that, the heliacal rising of star Sirius. I think it actually starts a few days later. Okay, here we go. Let me go back a few days. Right here, the end of July. So people are saying it's now, but that's because this alignment used to be in a different Part of the sky thousands and thousands of years ago this this date on or around this date is the actual serious heliacal rising the egyptian new year this is when the nile flooded and helped to fertilize the nile river delta so this was a big deal for the egyptians uh this is also the dog days of summer right here so what you're going to be able to see early august because it'll probably be a little bit later there if you get up before dawn, before 7 a.m., you should be able to see one of the brightest stars in our sky, the star Sirius, okay? So just a heads up, keep your eyes peeled for that if you're an early riser. Now, if you don't like mornings, which I have really become a not a morning person since I've started my new job, you guys, it's crazy. It's it's weird. I used to get up at 5 a.m. I was ready to go. I can't do it anymore. It's like... 7.30 is like the earliest I can get myself out of bed for some reason, <laughs> unless I really, really have to. Um, so let's go to the evening skies because here's another nice opportunity. And they're both at the same time. So those of you that are early risers, those of you that cannot get up before the sun rises, you have this opportunity. But we have to turn the sky around. Here we go. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, there she is. Venus. The, e the baby evening star. This really is quite, if you're following Venus cycles with me, when you 
actually finally spot Venus in the Western sky for the first time, this feels so good. Like all of a sudden you are turned on. Like you can feel like, yes, there's the light at the end of the tunnel. Here's a new creative cycle. Let's go. All right. So it'll probably be mid-August before we can actually spy her with our eyes. But don't you worry, y'all. I will be taking a picture. We will be spying on Venus. It's going to be fantastic. All right. I am I'm kind of dragging my feet showing you this calendar, but I guess let me do it. Let me do it. Here we go. This is the chart. Let's do this first. <laughs> then I promise you we will look at the calendar that I, of course, I do by hand, guys, because it just, there's something about putting pen to paper and connecting this energy together that is just a part of my practice that I absolutely love to do. So, um, although when I saw how much energy is coming, I kind of freaked out. Okay. So here's when it starts. Here's Venus at zero degrees of Cancer. Let's watch her until July 23rd. See that? There we go. And I am going to keep this uh, wheel up for us because I want to bounce back and forth. The way that this, the way that this chart looks is really awful. So let's get into it. There's the Crab Nebula right there. Um, let's go on. I was going to talk about the spiritual significance of crabs, but I don't know. I just don't feel like it fits. And I feel like y'all are really wanting to see this. So, okay, here we are. This is the calendar. Oh my gosh. I know. Doesn't it look crazy? I don't even want to show this to you. I'm kind of embarrassed because I'm going to actually tease all this out for you. And the interesting part about it is that we really only have to start here. But I think, I think what I really ought to do, well, a lot of this energy that comes right at the new moon and during the new moon starts at the new moon, kind of goes through that, goes through, through that first week and then fades off. So we do really need to talk about this energy. Okay. So I'm going to go through it one at a time. We're going to try and go back and forth between this calendar and the chart. Hopefully that will work for you guys. Uh, hopefully you can see it. Uh, that is my uh, another concern of mine, but let's just see if this works for a little bit. All right, let's get into it. Okay, guys. Venus trines a retrograde Saturn. This started last month, and this is the energy, one of the energies that's coming through June that will end on the day that Venus enters into Cancer. The reason I use these calendars, guys, and I have very long lines for their energies is because I use a wider orb on Venus energy. If you're consciously following a planet, then you want to use a wider orb. If you can see, if you can feel an energy within six to nine degrees, then that's when it starts for you. That's when it starts. And so I've tuned my antenna to Venus energy. And so this energy applies during these lines. Whereas if you were to look at it in Prometheus and do a Venus transit, they're only like, three days. And that's fine. I mean, if you're not following Venus, that, that serves a purpose. When I'm doing general transits, I don't, I don't pick apart the calendar like this. So at any rate, this is, Venus has been trining a retrograde Saturn and will do so until the seventh. So Saturn attains enlightenment by realizing he built his own prisons. Y'all have heard me say this before. When you're not working consciously with a planet, especially Saturn, you can you can end up in in repeating patterns going why me why is this happening to me without actually learning the lesson the stuff keeps happening and it's it's those decisions that we make the unconscious ones and the conscious ones that mold and shape the reality that we live in so you really want to try to master this saturn energy it's the key to really manifesting the life that you want and saturn believe it or not wants you to thrive the greatest wish of Saturn is that you learn your powers of self-control and responsibility before you pass away. I mean, Saturn's pretty heavy, right? You know, it all, it feels like I have to do this. I have to do this. Uh, you know, and Saturn really never like makes you feel good about things either. It's, it's always the thing I have to do. So Saturn just turned retrograde on the 20. 9th of June and will go back direct on the 
15th of November. So this is also a nice time where Saturn will release sort of the heavy glumness that he usually has. Like it doesn't feel much like Saturn pressure when there's retrograde. So it's a nice opportunity to do the things you want to do, do the things that you get to do, right? I always catch myself sometimes. I'm like, I got to work tomorrow. I'm like, no, 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 I get to work tomorrow because it is indeed an honor and a privilege to be able to provide such a valuable service to the community that I live in. And if I stay within that mindset, and I'm just using myself as an example because I do struggle with this, you know, if I stay within that mindset, then it becomes a joy. It becomes a pleasure. Now, sometimes you're fooling yourself. I, I, you know, I'm the first one to admit that I did that for years in my previous work. I said, I get to, I get to go to work today. But then when I realized my health was suffering a little bit, I said, okay, maybe, maybe I'm trying to be too much love and light. I really need to kind of love myself a little bit more here. Uh, but, but use retrograde as what are the things that I get to do that I love doing? You know, that's my calling. That's my purpose in life. I get to do these videos. I get to speak to thousands of people just by listening to the transmissions through these broadcasts. So, so yeah, Saturn and Aquarius, this is, this is an energy that is rarely emotional. Uh, so it, it can be helpful too when you have to make tough decisions. Saturn has an, uh, Saturn in Aquarius has uh, an ambivalence to sort of the daily trivial matters and urgency to greater collective themes. There's a unity here as well. So coalescing your collective energy around a common goal, future-minded souls with a singular purpose. You want to be careful that the shadow of this is an authoritarian energy, like trusting the science, censorship, propaganda, uh, conforming to the will of the powerful. So Venus with Saturn, just in cancer energy, there might be some emotional undercurrents beginning to well up here, but the good news is, is that Saturn energy is going to, the trine is going to back off a little bit here. So people are definitely, at least the week I'm recording this, people are definitely realizing that things are not always as they seem because of those emotional undercurrents. So be careful fooling yourself and saying, what do I get to do? Do I really get to do this or am I just fooling myself? I'm a very tenacious person. So sometimes I I scream my affirmations at myself <laughs> until, until I comply. Um, so that energy is from all the way until the seventh when Venus enters into the constellation of Cancer. Now from 7-2 to 7-12, Venus trines on Lilith, okay? Lilith, asteroid Lilith, right here in Libra, trining on to Venus. So let's move this chart back a little bit so we can get to that point because we are from the 2nd to the 12th. So I think if we move right here, yes. All right, this is cool because the life hack that I want to tangent off onto is has to do with this trine that we're looking at right here. So I'm gonna, I will talk about Venus and Lilith in the trine. I've already talked about <clears throat> Venus and Saturn in a trine. And so what this grand trine might mean, we'll get into that in a second. So let's talk about Venus trines Lilith from 7-2 to 7-12, while Lilith is in an opposition to Mars and Uranus. Lilith is, reminds me of very feminine Pluto energy, very extinct. Uh, instinctual. <laughs> My words are not coming to me today. I'm so sorry you guys have to suffer through this. Uh, instinctual energy, blending sort of Venus and Pluto. Uh, she will not tolerate that which is not resonant with her current state. So I read this as an instinctual quest for harmony and balance. It's almost as if Lilith can't help herself. You know, she won't put up with inequality or inequity. And with Venus in a trine, using her sensual feelings, it's really a good time to tap into, with inspiration, that which isn't fair and create something that is. So if you get that hit where you see something is not fair, like I was just talking about this, you know, what I was doing to myself was not fair, pushing myself so hard 
just so that I could say, I get to do this, or yes, I'm smiling through all this horribleness, you know? So it's Lilith, it's Lilith saying, hey, yeah, no, that's not how we're doing it. So that's, but but with Venus, we can use a little bit of inspirational energy and say, all right, how, how do we want to change this, okay? And we've just talked about Saturn and Aquarius. So what do we do with this trine energy right here? This just feels so good. This is this is the life hack I wanted to talk to you about. So I'm going to just step out of the charts real quick. We're going to just look at a graphic. Here it is. This is the good, fast, cheap life hack. And if any of you have seen the movie Cocktail with Tom Cruise way back from the 80s, you might remember this is where I got it. And I've seen it all over the internet since then. But when I realized what this meant, I almost... It almost changed everything for me. It changed the way I look at the world for the better. It made it easier for me to make decisions without an emotional component to it. And what this triangle is saying to us is that you can have something fast and good, but it won't be cheap. So it's basically cost, time, and quality. So good, fast, cheap. So good would be quality, right? Cheap would be cost. And fast would be time. These are all resources. These are all things that we value. We value things that are affordable. We value our time. You know, if we're going to spend time, we want it to be a quality time. So anything that's fast and good will be expensive. Anything that's good and cheap will take time. And anything that is cheap and fast will not be good. Okay. So low, uh, really quick, really cheap, low quality. All right. So this is just a simple little life hack. And that trine made me think of that. Because with Lilith trining onto Saturn, Lilith trining onto Venus, this instinctual energy wanting to tap into that energy, like, like she gets notified that something isn't fair or isn't working. Well, apply this triangle to the decisions that you have to make in order to, to fix that. This can apply to literally any decision. You know, what kind of camera do I want to buy for my studio? What kind of car do I want to get? How do I want this project completed? How do I want my website built? This is the triangle you can apply to that. So this is my quick little life hack. We will get back into the astrology. Thanks for bearing with me. But hopefully some light bulbs will go off for some of you and you can use this in your actual life. Okay. So what is that? Okay, so let's get back to the calendar. I'll have that ready to go to with the chart. And we are <clears throat> right here with that Venus trining Lilith. Now, the next transit is from July 2nd to <clears throat> July 9th. And this is Venus squaring onto Chiron. This is really the only tough energy that's going on during this transit, but the whole transit itself is in, is intense, especially at the beginning here with this coming weekend right after July 4th, which is um, America's Independence Day that we celebrate. We have this uh, Gemini new moon and all this other stuff going on. So I'm just talking about the energies that we're moving into this transit with that we're going to go through the new moon with, with Venus. So Venus squared to Chiron. So Remember that Venus in Cancer, that graphic that I showed you at the beginning, there is a tension here with Chiron. Here's what that square looks like, okay? Chiron is in Pisces, which speaks to the subconscious wounds of the collective, which is disconnection from spirit. So that, that beautiful glimmering Venus deep in the waters of emotion and intuition is feeling into the collective's wounds. So that's what this is here. So this is this is a new awareness of unintegrated wounds. During this week, uh, you might feel like an imposter. You might convince yourself you're not the expert. You might convince yourself you're not smart enough, beautiful enough, perfect enough, or good enough to pursue that which truly inspires you. Now, what's so great about this even though it's a square, 
is the energy. If you're sensitive to it and you use the big orb, you will feel this right before the new moon. And you can say, oh, Dr. Danny said I might be having some of these emotions. So begin to set intentions for yourself, right? To understand deeply at an intuitive level those unintegrated subconscious wounds that you have, that someone else has, you know, help them find it. These wounds need to be accepted. They need to be seen and accepted and integrated and loved as part of the beautiful, multifaceted human spirit that you are. So I want you to say those words to yourself during the new moon, regardless of whatever Chiron brings up for you in your subconscious ego mind. Okay. Let's talk about the fifth. My goodness, this day is crazy. Energies coming in on top of the energies that we already have. They're sort of switching places during this new moon. So this new moon is going to be a shift simply because of that, but then also because both the sun and the moon are conjunct star Sirius. Okay, and I already showed you on Stellarium why that's important. It's been important. It's one of the brightest stars in the sky. Once we have Sirius Midheaven, which will happen in about three months after, yeah, in about three months, you can probably get up about 12 at midnight, between midnight and 3 a.m. and see Sirius Midheaven. Okay. So, and you will be amazed at how bright it is. So if it's a new moon and Sirius is Midheaven and the sun is down, wow. I mean, it can actually cast a shadow. That's how bright it is. Some people think we're in a binary system with Sirius. It's kind of far away to be binary. I don't know what the rules on that would be necessarily. But what's so interesting about Sirius is that uh, there was there is a 50-year orbital period between its A star, alpha star, which is the point of light that we see, and its B star. And whenever that those two stars because they're in a binary star like i just i just don't think we're in a binary star system with sirius they're so far away sirius itself is a trinary star system so it has three stars maybe two and you have sirius a sirius b and there's very dense energy in these stars they're very very bright they're they're blue and whenever that 50 year orbit takes place and there and one of the suns comes between us and sirius there is a fluctuation in energy i can't remember where i read that but it just came to my brain. So yeah, Sirius is a big deal. It's the scorcher, right? Um, so it's, and I, I think the energy of star Sirius is going to comment very specifically on this next lunar cycle. And I am in a couple of days going to do a new moon video. I might do that first. I don't know. I can't remember the order. <laughs> so you may have already seen it if, uh, if I did that first. Um, so so yeah, so look to the skies. This is truth, uh, curiosity, uncovering scientific truths. That's this new moon in Gemini. Then Mercury enters Leo as well uh, on the 5th. So this is expressive communication from the heart. This is unintimidated in expression. This is speaking, writing, performing, grand gestures, and authoritative speaking. So all of this happens on the 5th, this, this, all this new energy starts. So does a uh, Venus sextile Uranus and then a Venus opposed Pluto. Now, Mars has also just entered the constellation of Taurus. I forgot to mention him. So we'll, we'll talk about that energy real quick. Bear with me all. Okay, so... Mars is the planet of action. He attains enlightenment by enacting the will of the creator. And right now he's in Aries. But by the time you watch this video, he's going to be in Taurus. So everything that is sort of initiated, enterprising, wanting to be the first slows way down. Mars just takes a chill pill here. It's cool. So he simply wants to stop and smell the roses. Um, our actions and our will will must align to our values here. If, if they don't, nothing's going to be accomplished. So whatever does get accomplished with Mars and Taurus has a slow or a, a long and lasting value to it. Okay. 
All right. So that is just the week before, okay, Venus enters into Cancer. We're not even really there yet. Let's dive into the first energy that extends a little bit in there. We've already talked about Venus trining on the left. That will ask, act, uh, that will aspect until the 12th. We have Venus sextiling Uranus from the 5th to the 9th. That's this right here, this yellow line. So Uranus attains enlightenment through metamorphosis and rebellion. He's the way. He's the light that shows us our path of individuality. And being in Taurus, it's grounded in real values. Just like Mars being in Taurus is going to be grounded in real uh, invaluable action. That means any anything that happens with your Uranus is going to be of value. This is an opportunity or an opening. You don't necessarily have to take it. But whenever Venus and Uranus get together, it's always fireworks. It's really, really nice. So it's an opportunity for you to, in an inspired way, break pattern, trick the programming around you, trick the matrix. Like, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do something that you don't usually think I do. And it's going to be surprising and it's going to be amazing and it's going to feel really, really good. Okay, so that is the opening. That's the opportunity. That might be the energy I focus on <laughs> for this coming weekend. Might, might uh, do, us, do us better anyway. And then focusing on the power of Sirius. So the next energy is... Venus trining onto Neptune. Okay. Neptune just went retrograde, right? Oh, Neptune attains enlightenment through all that's possible. She's considered the higher, higher octave of the Venus principle. So we like to look at her when we're doing Venus energies. Neptune's the cosmic shaman of the zodiac. Neptune in our natal chart reveals our imagination empathy, and our intuition. On a collective level, it shapes the spirituality and the imagination of a generation. Neptune lacks discernment sometimes, though, and not in a bad way. It's just that anything and everything is okay once you're to that amazing ascended state that Neptune you know, tries to go to where everything is one, then discernment really doesn't matter. Uh, you know, so, th so the lack of discernment is what tends to have Neptune energy fall into a state of illusion, disillusion, or fantasy. So uh, altered states are not out of the question, uh, but just be careful with substances. Neptune is going to be retrograde for five months. So the energy of Neptune retrograde is lifting of the veil. So we're going to be able to see that misty beach that that beautiful woman was walking on at the beginning of this presentation, that mist is going to lift and, and we'll be able to see more clear, clearly, especially in this trine. So the, the veil lifting allows a sensing of what our deepest soul yearnings are. And you'll have that Uranus energy to be able to like make snap decisions to follow along that path. Saturn will be there too to make sure that you're responsible and then Chiron will make sure that it's all about integrating. Now, the next energy that's going to take us into Cancer with Venus is Venus opposing Pluto. We'll take a break and look at the chart real quick. All right. I don't know why I'm so out of order on my notes here. So Pluto attains enlightenment through transformation, purification, the Lord of the underworld, the Lord of wealth, uncovering all of our secrets. There's an energy of purging relationships here that are no longer serving our higher creative purpose. We're asked in Cancer to use the power of intuition. So Venus through Cancer is to see what and who needs to be purged from that inner circle, from that inner space, cleansing that deep space that is yours. This is a compassionate purging, though. This is not, I hate you, get the F out of my life. You know, it, it's one of those, This it, it's me, not you. You know, I need to move on. If you want to come with me, that's cool. But, you know, that that kind of thing. So, so yeah, that's Venus opposing Pluto on top of that grand trine that she's a part of. And that, my loves, is everything that begins Venus in Cancer. So let's just take a pause. Let's look at this chart. Let's soak all this in. And then we will, the, the rest of the 
the transit's pretty straightforward. So it, it'll go quicker, I promise. I always like to build you guys up with a good foundation of what you're looking at. And then, you know, then we can move along a little quickly here. So let's get out the pen, take a look. So here is Venus, Lilith, Saturn. Okay. Don't forget that little life hack, okay? You can definitely make decisions much, much easier if you think about the three points. Let's move forward a little bit because this is, so the fifth is when all of that starts, everything that I just described. The, uh, oh, rats. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Bear with me. Here we go. So this, uh, Venus trying Neptune, Venus opposing Pluto, Venus sextile Uranus. This is all like right here. Okay. So you can see all these aspects happening. There it is. Oh, there it is. Beautiful. We basically end up with this grand kite, right? All those energies I just read to you. This is, this is a practical, instinctual, intuitive, unexpected action oriented energy that is bringing us into cancer where we can tap deep into our true authentic self, feel into that love, have compassion for ourself, have compassion for our wounding. And all of this is, is commenting on this. So there's, there's a Chiron energy that will catalyze this beautiful breaking of pattern here that I think is the key to this. The instinctual energy of Lilith opposing that erratic, crazy, do whatever energy of Uranus taking action with Mars some big action is going to be taken here, but it's and it's going to be strange, but it'll be rooted in our values, rooted in what's important to us. Sextiling on the billionaire planet, sextiling on responsibility. These three are in a grand trying. Just remember, good, cheap, fast. Okay. So let's erase the bubbles. And then let's actually get into the cancer transit. So really everything that I just described to you starts this first week of those transits. So the Saturn trine Venus energy wanes off. The Saturn uh, or the Venus sextile Uranus wanes off. Venus square Chiron uh, wanes off. But what continues is Venus trining on Neptune, Venus opposing Pluto, and those are the two big energies that we're dealing with, okay, that we're dealing with during this next week. It should be nice, okay, except we're going to have to listen to that purging. Chiron's going to trigger us, and then Pluto's going to help us purge. So that's the tough part. But you've got that sextile to Uranus, that trine to Neptune, uh, and it just wants to help you. And then you've got this emotional, intuitive, sensing Venus and Cancer energy all right there. So moon energy is helping you. It's It really all starts on this uh, new moon here where everything's conjunct Sirius. So remember that power of Sirius. That's where it's harnessed. That's how you use it. Ooh, all right. So once you're through that first week of Venus and Cancer, we get on to a new transit. <laughs> just as the sun enters cancer. So this is my birth sign right here. This is not what I thought it was for many years of my life. I thought I was a Leo, but that's because I follow tropical cancer. So, you know, does it make a difference? It can. I never felt comfortable as a Leo sun. Just, I never felt expressive and outward. I mean, I, I kind of more am a Leo sun now than I was when I was being told I was a Leo sun. Um, and my progress sun is actually in Virgo now. So, <laughs> um, so the new energy is going to be Venus trining on the north nodes and sextiling the south nodes, south node. So the moon's nodes are intimately connected to our subconscious realms, right? The moon, the nodes, cancer energy. This is all about the, the deep rooted energy, rooted in the past. So to have Venus trining on that north node, it's an energy where our conscious aspirations are pulling us toward changes that align with our personal evolution. Venus is the billionaire planet, planet. So there's abundance, there's grace, there's charm. Relationships tend to go smoothly, especially the ones that are helping you evolve. So if 
while Venus is doing this energy to the nodes that week from the 16th to the 23rd, if some of your relationships feel like they're being forced, that might be because they're not for your evolution. So just pay attention to that. If you get that little nagging feeling. Um, yeah, it, it's all about engaging authentically, right? You don't want to be too charming. You don't want to mask your intentions. Like, like I even spoke to at the beginning, you don't want to be all love and light. You need to know when something isn't working, use that power of Lilith and, and let it go. Uh, you might be more creative here with this trine as well, especially if your destiny is associated with creative endeavors. So this is going to be a balance here to stay mindful between self-interest and the well-being of others. Uh, it's not really all about you just receiving and becoming yourself, but it's also about enriching the lives of others. You have to give too, not just receive, but also give. Probably a little bit of time in nature is always good, especially by the water, since Venus is in Cancer. Uh, the, the beautiful sounds of nature, the harmony. Um, use compassion, use understanding, use empathy in your relationships and reflect on your path. So the sun enters Cancer too, the same time this happens. And sun in Gemini to sun in Cancer is going to feel different, very similar to that plunge that Venus took from the airy social light interacting energy to the, the deep waters. Okay. That's what the sun's going to do too. So it won't be about the mind anymore. Now it's going to be about the mood. We're going to be feeling more during the sun's transit through cancer. So it's a good time to sit with the self and recognize those subtle energies of intuition. The ability to read other people's emotions will also be very heightened while the sun is through cancer. Because you can see the sun shines light on all things, yes? And then finally, I told you this is going to get faster. The last transit through Cancer is Venus sextiling on Jupiter, that green line right there. That's going to be in effect from the 18th to the 23rd of July. So Jupiter attains enlightenment through expansion, faith, and optimism. And he's transiting through Taurus right now. Uh, it's an abundant time to expand our values, expand which we have faith in, expand our ability to feel secure and to, and to expand our self-worth. Venus being in a sextile with the uh, millionaire planet, so you have the billionaire and the millionaire planet in a sextile together, this is a wonderful opportunity to bring in the energies of wealth, creation, abundance, faith, expansion, and optimism. This transit is going to end very nicely. And it's going once Venus transits into Leo, it's going to feel very, very energized uh, on, on a like a chakra level. Okay. All right. And then the um, of course the Sagittarius full moon, the second Sagittarius full moon that we will have will be on the 21st of July. And of course, I will have a expert report prepared for you when we get there. But yeah, lots of intense energy like this first weekend right before venus enters cancer almost preparing us with this new moon to set these really really important intentions for compassion and acceptance and forgiveness so that we can tap into the power of sirius that scorcher yeah it's uh it's going to be an interesting time it's in interesting to see what this you know i also feel like there's some truth coming out too i feel like there's a lot of people that have seen things on tv recently where Maybe they didn't realize what was actually going on. You know, certain conversations between political leaders opened a lot of people's eyes, I think, and really showed people what we're in for. There, there's a lot of truth coming out on many, many fronts, too. And I, I think that that has to do with Pluto's energy as well. Saturn and Neptune going retrograde, lifting the veil, releasing the, the restrictions to express that so super interesting times we're living in i'm super excited i'm grateful for all of you for watching this and putting up with my tired ramblings i just wanted you to have some content and be ready for this weekend coming up i'm going i am going to do a full uh, or a new moon report at least that's my intention we'll see how it goes and i will be releasing that in a couple of days and then i also wanted to do a little bit of a 
not an educational video, but a concept video where we do some astrology, but it's not timed with anything. It's just something that I'm working on and I wanted to run it by you guys and see if you resonated with it. So I might do that too. So we might have a few videos coming out. And then after next week, so once once we're through this coming week, I will be doing a live. So join the fellowship, like and subscribe and hit notify. Sign up for that financial and business astrology course. It's going to be off the chain. It's going to be great. And until the next video, I love you all so much. Thank you. Namaste.